Stefan Doe is Professor of Wildlife Science at Swansea University in Wales and the Editor-in-Chief of the International Journal of Wild and Fire. Um, Professor, welcome to the programme. Um, what are the key uh, contributors uh, on the occurrence and spread of wildfire, particularly in places like Hawaii? Yeah, what we see in the news is basically dried out fuel in many places, fuel being the forest or in the case of Hawaii, mainly shrubs and grasses in Tenerife, it's again forests at the moment. And if these become relatively dry, like we see in the summer, especially in, in some of the dry areas down Canada, these become very flammable. If we then have a lightning ignition or human ignition, perhaps a failed power line, perhaps a, a, a burn of vegetation, a human burn of vegetation getting out of control, we're getting these fires. What we are seeing, or what we've seen in Hawaii is a very unfortunate combination of very, very strong winds and very flammable vegetation. And that has led to this uh, really, really tragic event. And it's a difficult, broad question, but broadly, what does wildfire mean to the natural world in terms of flora and fauna? Is this terminal or temporary? Well, in most cases, this is very temporary. If we go to Canada, for example, uh, Canada burns every year, except that the area that's affected by a particular fire usually has maybe 50, 60 or 100 years to recover. Those trees, in fact, need fire to rejuvenate. Um, but if fires are too frequent or too extensive, then the recovery can take very long. Hawaii is a different story, though, because Hawaii does have naturally occurring fires, but not very frequently. So that means the vegetation does not need to adapt to fire and therefore the damage can be higher. Now, fortunately in Hawaii, I would say the area affected by fire has been mainly grass and shrub covered. Grasses recover really, really quickly after fire. Trees can take much longer. I would expect the palm trees that we've seen burnt um, will probably, most of those will recover, but nevertheless, I mean, plants and animals, particularly in Hawaii, will take some time to recover from this uh, really dramatic event. How has uh, climate change affected uh, the patterns uh, of wildfires in Hawaii, and what are the implications uh, for the future of these areas? Now, Hawaii has a dry season, but this dry season has become drier in recent decades, and also what we've seen in the last 100 years or so is that the area burned has increased by about uh, to 400 percent from what it used to be. So we're definitely seeing a change. Uh, this is partially due to climate change, but it's also partially due to the land being more flammable because we have more grasses in the landscape compared to the forest we had in the past. It's worth adding here, though, that globally, due to climate change, the season in which fires tend to be common the fire weather window or the fire weather season basically has increased globally on average by 27 percent since the late 1970s so we're really seeing at least on average around the world a strong increase in the conditions where fires are likely we then add on to this uh, a lightning ignition or human ignition then again we could have the recipe for disaster if it's very windy and we're seeing this in many places around the world now very unfortunately Professor, good to talk to you. Thanks very much for coming on the programme. Uh, Professor Stefan Doer from uh, Swansea University in Wales.